Coming up on Tech News Today, how Microsoft losing money is good news, the size of Meyer's package, and how to run Firefox OS on your desktop. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, July 20th, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs with automatic device scaling. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code TNT7. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm, I'm Darren Kitchen. And we just that was a collision. I don't know. How many times have we done this? 25,000. All right. Just asking. Hey, Jason. Hi, uh, Jason Howell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we dropped some packets there in the open, but welcome <laughs> to Tech News Today. We'll keep you up to date on the most important tech stories of the day, starting with the top 10 stories of the day in the Minecraft theme news feeds. It was the best of quarters it was the worst of quarters for Microsoft. The good news, revenue set a record at $18.06 billion, up 4% year over year. The bad news, operating income fell 97% to $192 million, and the company reported a loss of $0.06 cents per share. The bad news is due to a write-down of $6.2 billion related to its 2007 acquisition of advertising company Aquantiv, and then tack onto that another $540 million in revenue that they have to defer because it's related to Windows 8 upgrades and you can't count that until Windows 8 is actually released. Newly appointed Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer will receive $1 million per year salary as part of a package. $1 million. That's right. Uh, a total package worth $60 million if, and that's a big if, she stays through 2017 or is fired without cause. Meyer is the third Yahoo CEO in the last year and the fifth in five years. So maybe history won't repeat itself this time. Girl can dream. It's over. DirecTV and Viacom have finished their little squabble, and now Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, and more are back. It took about a week, and while financial terms were not disclosed, Bloomberg reports that the two struck a seven-year deal at $600 million per year. That's roughly 20% more than Viacom was getting before. Google reported earnings beating expectations. On its earning call, the company said that its decline in the amount of money collected on ad clicks is related to foreign exchange rates. On the call, an executive said that Larry Page is still without voice, but he continues to run the company. Silently mm. running the company. Uh, Senator Joe Lieberman and four other senators have introduced a modified version of the Cybersecurity Act of 2012 in the U.S. Senate. The act still calls for the creation of a National Cybersecurity Council headed by the Secretary of Homeland Security. Modifications make participation by companies voluntary and include stronger privacy and civil liberties protections. The U.S. Senate will debate the bill next week. Email app maker Sparrow has announced on its blog it's been bought by Google and the team will join the Gmail team to, quote, accomplish a bigger vision. While that might be true, some users are reacting pretty negatively to Sparrow's rationale that, quote, as we'll be busy with new projects, we do not plan to release new features for Sparrow apps. Ooh. You might, however, plan to expect better Gmail on iOS. Hmm. Some ISPs are lying to you. Shocker. According to the FCC, it turns out that Verizon, Comcast, and Cablevision are providing faster speeds than advertised. Shocker. Last year, Cablevision was found to provide around 50% of its advertised speed. This year, it hit 120%. Verizon Files also hit 120%. Lenovo paid its CEO, Yang Yongquin, a $3 million bonus. And instead of buying something nice like a boat or a spaceship, he did something even crazier. The CEO decided that he'd take the money and give it to 10,000 junior level employees, inking assistants, receptionists, and more. They each netted about three fourteen dollars. How fun would that have been if you're that CEO? You're yeah, just walking around handing people checks for three hundred dollars. If he gave uh, hundred times more people that much money, he'd be giving them three point one four and say, "Happy pie! Yeah, go buy yourself a slice." Takedown requests may soon become unsustainable. Torrent Freak reports that companies like Microsoft. 
I've started to issue takedown requests to Google for the reports that list takedown requests. <laughs> Since Google lists all takedown requests on chilling effects, it is essentially building a giant list of URLs that lead to allegedly pirated material. And since each takedown request for a takedown request links to the takedown request, the, my head hurts. GNU is not GNU is not GNU is not Unix. Yeah. Comcast is planning to fight FiOS with f Fast. Yeah, easy for yeah, you. It sounded good. so much better in my head. Comcast <laughs> is prepping a 305 megabits per second download speed broadband service in an effort to compete with Verizon's FiOS Quantum service in the same markets that FiOS is in currently. See what they're doing? The info supposedly came from an internal company video stream where Comcast CEO Neil Smith mentioned the new tier, although no word yet on upload speeds. Hopefully it's not with a 100 bass team mode this time. A little theme music oh. for that. Oh, Darren talks, I just hear music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your words are like music, Darren. Human chorus hey. coming out of your mouth. This episode of Tech News Today brought to you by the new Squarespace.com. Faster and easier than ever to create a high-quality website or blog. Uh, totally redid it. New product, HTML5, CSS3, redone JavaScript foundations. It's faster and it's flexible. The cool thing is that it now creates automatically mobile versions of your site. So when you create this great looking Squarespace site with the great looking Squarespace templates, it's gonna look great on a tablet. It's gonna look great on a smartphone. The designs are seamlessly and transparently baked into each master template. Uh, images are automatically versioned seven ways so they fit and look right on your page. And of course, they still have the beautiful templates, 100% drag and drop functionality, customizability, all the plugins, and you can still try it without giving them any kind of commitment uh, if you're afraid of commitment, you don't have to give them a credit card number. You don't have to do anything. You just go start playing around with it. Uh, in fact, if you're a current subscriber, you can actually uh, uh, convert your account and your content to the new Squarespace code whenever you choose to. You can keep your site in the old one. Uh, Squarespace is all about what's right for you. So go there, squarespace.com. Sign up for a free account. Like I said, no credit card needed. Just try it out. If you decide to purchase it, use the offer code TNT7 and get 10% off your first purchase on new Squarespace accounts. That includes monthly and annual plans. And don't forget about free domain registration still going on if you get the annual plan subscriptions. Once you get a domain name for free, it's yours to keep. That's squarespace.com, offer code TNT7. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. Let's talk about that Microsoft uh, loss. Uh, they, they announced the uh, purchase of a Quantive uh, back in 2007. And then earlier this month, they said, yeah, that, that didn't work out. Uh, it's been a near total loss. They spent $6.3 billion acquiring a Quantive. They're writing down $6.2 billion of that. So Microsoft reported its first unprofitable quarter since it became a public company 26 years ago. Uh, they lost a half a billion dollars in the quarter. That actually is pretty great news when you think about it, right? You wrote down $6.2 billion in loss, and you only lost half a billion. That's kind of brilliant. I mean, they're still making money. And yeah. They're still going to continue to hand over fist, and, <clears throat> and then, you know, their, uh, their shares actually go up. So, I mean, I think, if anything, it just says that people are confident. That's the interesting thing. The shares went up 3% in after hours trading last night after they delivered, now, uh, 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 granted, a record Q4 and annual revenue, mm -hmm. but the first loss in 26 years, you think the stock market would get skittish about that. Why didn't they? Well, I mean, this was a purchase. Sorry, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, it, it just seems like it was just a tax situation. They did some accounting tricks and go, we have a $6.2 billion loss because this thing was a total loss. We're going to take it right now. I know we reported something like this similar a couple of weeks ago, uh, and it wiped out their entire fourth quarter profit because now they don't have to owe anything. So I just think it was, that's why the market was like, oh, good, you guys actually have some smart planning going on. And, and that's why they didn't freak out. It's not like Microsoft's been not doing anything for the past couple of weeks. You know, they've been like uh, introducing products left and right. So it seems like they're strong. It's their first loss instead of it being like the sixth, seventh quarter in a row. That would be frightening. But you think it's one, a strategic move to do it before the release of Windows 8? No, well, could be. I mean, I, I just think it was just... Okay, we have this loss. Let's take it now and just move it along. Move it this along. is also, I mean, the purchase was back in 2007. 2007 was a very interesting year because it was before a big downturn for a lot of a lot of tech companies. Uh, I don't know. I, I I remember that year really well, actually. Uh, so you, you think of, when you when you put this into perspective, it's not as if Microsoft has made some really interesting missteps recently, and that's pointing towards some sort of a downward spiral for them. I think it's yeah, more of a 
accounting correction. And I think Microsoft is still, you know, absolutely ingrained. It's almost like spaghetti coded into all corporations. And so that we're not going to, you know, see any like it would take uh, several it would take generations of missteps at this I, point, unfortunately. Microsoft has not been a darling of the investment community. The, Steve Ballmer's head has been called for many times. They said, you know, he needs to be replaced. Microsoft is stagnating. Uh, usually when we see this kind of thing happen, if they do a big loss like this, no, it doesn't matter what the excuse is, even if it's a $6.2 billion write down, the market will say, see, and then you and and you failed at a quantive uh, and you're not going in the right direction and, and the stock goes down and, and the confidence goes down and it's seen as another milestone along the road to failure. Uh, you, you've seen this with Nokia, we've seen it with RIM, we've seen it with Yahoo, but Microsoft seems to have turned that conversation around. A year ago, it was how long will Steve Ballmer last as CEO? Now it's how successful is Windows 8 going to be? What's the Surface tablet uh, strategy going to turn out to be? And this seems to me to indicate that people are pretty positive about Microsoft for the first time in a long time. Well, that in the stock market is just really bizarre. I mean, like when we see the Apple stuff where the rumors will, will get the stock price up and up and up, and then they actually introduce a product and then it tanks that day. So it's just kind of like, okay, the market... There's Buying the rumors, selling the news exactly. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, do, so do you guys think that, that Microsoft's turned around the perception or is turning oh yeah i mean they're definitely on the the swing to to the cool town you know with like the they're finally doing stuff right with windows phone the cool stuff with surface i mean they they actually have a little bit of um of hype behind it now do you think though with the low as opposed to let's say ios or android the adoption rate of windows phone being as low as it is still puts them in cool town i don't think that matters as far as public perception though the perception of cool is different than the market share of the actual devices being sold the, the fact that you know you may be tied to android or tied to ios doesn't mean that you don't like look at that thing over there and you're like oh, that, that looks pretty, pretty but if good. it's cool enough that's where you'd want to be well there's a the threshold for <laughs> cool throw out what you currently have and buy something new is just beyond where they are in cool town they're like they're at the <laughs> outskirts of cool town just by the bus stop <laughs> they think they're on the list they do for cool town yeah but the bouncer hasn't the found the bouncer's their name like yet. yeah you know just just wait here for a minute <laughs> i think i think june was very good to microsoft i think people uh, received windows phone 8 well uh, and I think people receive the Microsoft Surface tablet well. Remember, Windows 8, it's kind of been, depending on who you talk to, whether people are excited about it or not. They missed the start menu. They're not sure about this Metro interface. Uh, but this all seems to indicate that the balance of the opinion is is in their favor. Well, I mean, if anything, that's just saying, like, hey, we're Microsoft, and guess what? This isn't an iteration. We're, we're, doing, we're trying things. We're doing interesting things now. Another uh, company that has a positive perception suddenly is Yahoo. Uh, Marissa Meyer's package has been announced. Yeah, I think cautiously optimistic is more the way mm. that people are viewing mm -hmm. Yahoo at this point. But yes, uh, based on an at-will... Which is better than we think they're going to totally fail. Right. So that's an improvement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who are they? What do they do? Nobody knows. Nobody knows still, but people are hoping that maybe Meyer can turn it around. Based on an at-will employment letter that was filed with the SEC, we now know uh, many of the details of her contract. As we said in the news views, base pay of $1 million per year, which works out to a very paltry 83000 and some change per month. So she's barely going to, barely going to get by. Um, that's a lot of money, although if you compare it to Carol Bartz's package... She received more than $47 million in compensation for the first year, left after two and a half years, and got a $14 million severance payout. So numbers without anything else into consideration. Marissa Meyer certainly isn't the highest paid Yahoo CEO by a long shot, but it's still a, obviously a, a decent deal. This is uh, And she's never been a CEO before. She's never been a CEO before. Um, there is a $60 million contract in place for her, but she does have to stay five years. Lots of CEOs stay a lot longer than that, but not really when it comes to Yahoo. No. <laughs> Yahoo's had such a revolving door, such high turnover that you think, well, you know, five years, that seems like a lifetime when we're talking about Yahoo. For the internet years, especially, yeah. Uh, Meyer also sent out her first internal memo, um, which was... So her first internal leaked. memo has been leaked. That's right, yes. On the not, top, not, privileged and confidential, do not forward. Not to be shared mm -hmm. um, and, was, and was published on blogs. She doesn't really say anything that's too uh, out there, but she does seem to be fully aware that 
the mood within Yahoo is, you know, people are frightened. People might want to jump ship. People don't know if the project that they're working on matter. Will they stay around under Meyer? Um, she said, quote, I have some ideas, but I need to develop a more informed perspective before making strategy or direction changes. In the meantime, please do not stop. You're doing important work. Please don't stop. If you have questions or concerns about whether to continue or not, please ask. And then, yes, keep moving. So she's pretty much saying, please, nobody freak out. I'm not going to be able to fix this overnight. I got I to gotta be CEO and work some stuff out and meet a lot of you, but just keep moving forward. So it's at least the right attitude to try to... She's got all those videos to watch, too. The welcome to Yahoo. As CEO of the company, you will learn many things in this instructional Her video. Introduction package. Yeah. 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 I, I think the tone of this email is trying to be, I'm one of you. I'm mm -hmm. not the CEO giving you a load of crap about how we're awesome, but I do think we're awesome. Uh, and, and I know you're uncertain about things. And let me try to reassure you. I can't reassure each one of you individually, but the likely answer is keep moving on the products. Keep doing it. Uh, it's very much of a pep talk. Do you think it works? I mean, I was reading this a couple of times, and I, I think I think it will work because the way this, the energy in, in the actual memo, uh, it seems like okay. I liked Yahoo when I was a ki like a kid, 1994. I used to use this as David and Jerry's guide to the World Wide Web. This idea that she's been using it before, and I, a, lot, a lot of us used Yahoo a long time ago because it was the leader for a while. So this idea of going, hey, you know what? It's not that I'm going to come in, gut you guys, and completely change everything. It's not going to be like when Larry Page took over Google and said we're going to flatten the company out. It's I'm coming in. I want, uh, before I do any decisions, I want to know what's going on. Like that's, I, I know that sounds a little basic, but that's very, very encouraging for everybody who's like, is my division getting cut? Are we being sold? Is this delicious again? What's happening? Because Yahoo owns a ton of different properties. Still, they did all those acquisitions. So n a number of these little subsidiaries have no idea what's going to happen. And this kind of memo seems like it will calm people down. And the people there must have whiplash. After the past couple of years, you know, they 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 need a little hand holding. They need a little reassurance. Uh, I can't imagine that there's a lot of good morale going around. So she's got a, a tall task there for sure. Uh, we we mentioned a while ago about Boot to Gecko, Firefox OS for mobile uh, being available, uh, and there's some news about how you can actually run it and test it. Yeah, you can test it out on your desktop if you're running I don't know Windows, OS 10, or Linux. So pretty much anything. Uh, there's there are builds out there, x86 compatible builds of BTG Boot to Gecko runtime. If you want to test it out, it, you, it's not like you can just download an application and launch it. You're gonna have to do a little work, uh, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, you can you can see the icons if you're watching the video. Everything is very round, so we don't have the the, uh, the standard tiles of of of, of uh, iOS. But uh, Tech Week Europe posted a whole bunch of screenshots, like 20 something shots of uh, Firefox OS, and it looks pretty cool. But Mozilla was they put out a statement saying, no, those are old, outdated images. But it caught fire today because people hadn't seen these, I guess, in a while. A I'm lot of people haven't seen them. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it looks like it looks quite polished. Again, though, I mean, I'd love to test it on a piece of hardware that. That's you know representative. I mean, a desktop experience is probably not going to be the same thing you have in your hand. Uh, Darren, what do you think? Do you think you're going to go to put Firefox OS on uh, your laptop there? I mean, I think it's. I mean, it's it's made for mobile, so I would love to try it out on my laptop. Uh, I'd love to you know play with developing for it. It sounds like it's pretty easy considering it's you know HTML and JavaScript. Uh, I, I'm kind of concerned about how it would actually you know what the experience the user experience would be you know considering it's you know it has that runtime behind it. And so it's not like a compiled binary. And I just, you know, I feel like it's, it might be really cool, but it might just end up being like the geek experience. And they're releasing bills nightly. So if you want to keep on the cutting edge, you can get those. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about that Cybersecurity Act of 2012 that we mentioned earlier. Uh, five senators have introduced a modified version. They introduced it originally in February, but the criticisms were not enough protections for civil rights and uh, too much regulation of companies. So they've compromised. This is not CISPA. This is not a SOPA revitalization. They're not trying to sneak in copyright law. This actually is about cybersecurity. It would set up a National Cybersecurity Council chaired by the Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, promoting hardening of critical infrastructure, making government standards optional, not mandatory, and the council would take an inventory of high-risk infrastructure, things like electric utilities, ISPs, uh, and would ask the owners of that infrastructure to come up with voluntary measures 
that could mitigate risks. Owners of infrastructure can then self-certify themselves or have a third party certify that they are in compliance. Uh, but it's for the benefit of the companies because what you get if you participate in this program is protection against liability, uh, expedited security clearance, priority assistance from the government as they develop this program, and the best one, warnings on relevant threat information, not just from the government, but from other participants in the program. So sharing of information is protected. That's been a big risk. Companies have not wanted to share information because they're worried that if they share a vulnerability, they, they would get prosecuted for it or it would expose trade secrets. This provides protections against that. Uh, the government would also be prohibited from compelling participants to disclose private information or to put in taps to do any kind of inter information intercept unless it's allowed by some other law. This law does not expand any of that kind of behavior. It would also require the government to improve the security of federal civilian cyber networks through reform of the Federal Information Security Management Act. So another thing is to put the light back on the government and say, you also need to get more secure. Uh, the president has written a column in the Wall Street Journal urging the Senate to pass the bill. Darren, have you looked at this? Uh, what do you think of the the act? Well, I mean, I think it's a great, you know, carrot instead of a stick approach. The idea of like, hey, you know, let's get everybody to self-certify. But then at that point, it's like, I've met the requirements in Section 103. Where's my liability protection? You know, so um, I, th I think that Obama is very serious about this. I, I'm not, you know, used to reading those kinds of letters in the, in the Wall Street Journal or anything. Um, but, uh, and I'm glad that, you know, they met requirements that, that are making the ACLU happy. Um, I just concerned about what it means to self-certify. And if this is just like a foothold into IT, and then we'll later balloon into the kinds of things that we've seen in other industries like banking, where there's like PCI compliance, that's a huge headache. And really at the end of the day is just a bunch of going through the motions. And yeah. so I'd like to see something hardened. It, it seems like they're trying to do the right thing. Now it's hard to avoid those kinds of pitfalls that you're talking about, but self-certification isn't as easy as saying, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I totally certified uh, because if you do get taken to court for liability and you want to invoke the protection that this act involves, you have to prove that your certification wasn't a bunch of bunk. Right. So it's, you know, it, there's, a, there's, a bit of a, there's a bit of a stick on the back end as well. Yeah, and I, and I think I understand that this had to be, you know, quote unquote, watered down a bit just to get the, the kinds of votes that it needs to pass um, through the Senate. I mean, uh, the original plan had the Department of Homeland Security asserting power over, well, power companies and other utilities and things of that nature. And so uh, I think that this is the, the only way that this is going to pass. I also find it interesting that this will pass before they go to um, a break in August, and this will all be debated next week while all of the hackers are in Las Vegas for Black Hat and DEF CON. Interesting how that works out. So I wonder what's going to get slipped in. What, like they're in not busy the rest of the year? <laughs> well, yes, but all the hackers are busy drinking instead of paying attention to the bills. And I'm just wondering, I just hope nothing gets like slipped in right before this gets passed. You got to watch the amendments. Because this seems really like soft and like, oh, this is happy fun time. Let's, you know, that sounds good. Put that on my resume. I passed the thing that, with the marshmallows, right? But then the marshmallows got the evil crusty core and you don't want that. Yeah. You don't want uh, crusty core amendments being no. added to the National Sub Sub Cybersecurity Act. So, uh, so I guess I would invite the Senate to come down to Vegas and just drink with us and we'll let you guys know what really needs to be in there. Can they hold their committee meetings in Vegas? Why yeah, not? Awesome. What do you think of this, Ayes? I think, I mean, it's it's got good intentions and unlike a lot of the other bills we've seen, it's not super broad and like you guys were saying, I got to watch out for the amendments. That, you know, got to pay attention throughout the whole process. But it, the fact that it's not creating new agencies, it's not adding people, it's not creating new laws, I mean, that are going to be more expansive. It's It's... It's like a framework almost. And I, I, I kind of like that approach as opposed to the, we're going to just rip apart, again, like <laughs> rip apart everything, create more government for this. So I, I think good intentions and I want to see what happens with it. It does seem to be crafted with more care and attention than other acts we've seen. And it actually is much longer because of that. Uh, I, I remember reading through SOPA and reading through CISPA uh, and being surprised at how simply written they were and that was the problem with them right they didn't they outline didn't, they, the protections yeah they didn't they didn't actually explain everything that was supposed to be covered well enough which obviously freaks people out yeah and this this in, in contains explicit language as to the fact that you cannot compel citizens 
uh, to uh, to give up their privacy, that, that civil liberties are, in fact, avowedly protected. And maybe, at least for the moment, some Congress people have learned their lesson about being vague in law. And I've learned my lesson about saying absolutes about what Congress people may or may not have learned. Let's save RIM. Let's do that. Uh, there's a piece on Fortune uh, written by EarthWeb and Dice co-founder Jack Hidery. And now he says RIM should pull a reverse Apple. Now, a lot of that... Just by using that phrase, this got like republished a hundred times on lots of different blogs. Because what's a reverse Apple? It's it's quotable. It's a great it's I don't a great even know line. What it means. Well, Apple his what Apple actually did and what he's referencing is that they switched to Intel, so they're only worried about software at this point. They don't have to worry about the hardware because it's commodity parts. So a reverse Apple would be RIM saying, okay, forget this operating system thing. We're going to go with Android. We're going to just kind of harden it for businesses, but focus on the hardware. This is what this person is saying, is, yes. in case you're picking this up mid-phrase. This is right. not what this Rim is, is saying this they're is going a suggestion to do. Yeah, yeah. By, uh, by Jack Hittery. And uh, so Rim should focus on the hardware side, move to Android. And he says, this I don't quite understand this. If, he can, if they can't get Google on board, they should look into Windows Phone. I don't really know why they have to get Google on board as opposed to just taking Android, it's open source. Well, I guess what he's saying is not just take Android and do open source like some of the Chinese companies mm. have done, but actually get become part of the Android program so that you get the updates yeah, early, the you're, you're involved in the entire, yeah, the Google Play Store, all that stuff. But could, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just very curious, do you think that the Android market could sustain another manufacturer going into it? I mean, HTC yes. is trying. Yes, because RIM has those footholds with corporations and with government where they're like, we have the secure messaging. They have, their biggest asset is one, they've got hardware that, you know, sorry, uh, the, the, you know, for a lot of people, they want the physical buttons and all of those things and they, they have nailed that and it's easy and they uh, they have nailed the um, the corporate integration with the secure messaging and uh, they think that they are best poised to partner with a, a Google or a Microsoft to make a really compelling offering based on those platforms that is like, oh, you want to run Android? Well, here's the locked down RIM version. This is RIM's take on Android. So if they, you know, pull a, uh, um, what is it? If they pull a, a handspring, not handspring, a palm, and do a, uh, a Windows trio instead of a palm trio, you know, I think they could be really successful. In fact, I think if anything, though, Jack uh, Hideri? Hideri. Hideri. Uh, might be a fan of Tech News today. Didn't we just say this like two weeks ago? Like verbatim almost? He definitely has fleshed out the idea more than we may have mentioned yeah. it. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't think he's the only one with the idea. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, well, then, then that just speaks volume. If like everybody's having the same ideas, like, come on, Rim. Like, maybe we're all just kind of pleading at this point because we don't want to see him just. Well, yeah, and well, like, what's the alternative at this point? Yeah. What are you going to come up with? That's you know maybe a better idea than this. Waiting until January, <laughs> putting out BlackBerry OS 10 and having it fall flat. That's right. the alternative, right. which seems to be what they've decided to do right Ugh. now. Well, it's maybe they'll nice. push it out a little bit farther and we'll, we can just keep speculating <laughs> we'll just for keep a while because they're really good at that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, make it 2014 while you're at it, I mean, right? Could you imagine yeah, them like teaming up out. with Google and saying, hey, Google, we've got this awesome IP. Let's like help like uh, backstream some of that stuff into your kernel, make Android better, make a better platform for you know government and industry. It's a very elegant stepping stone. You can put BlackBerry Messenger, you can put BlackBerry Enterprise Server, integrate it with Android. Only make it available on BlackBerry devices at first, then sort of allow it to be sold yep. uh, through particular channels, maybe in the Google Play Store, if you want to add it to other devices, and and and, and Rim could sudden, start hedging its bets. Yes, exactly. But they're already half-heartedly in that because they have that Android player, they have the ability to do that. So why sold. not just step? Yes. Keep going. See, the Push biggest, them into the pool. The, the biggest problem in in security right now for corporations is that you know mobile is so huge, and that people that, that the uh, attitude has been bring your own device, and so it's like acceptable in a lot of corporations to just show up with your own Android, your own iPhone, whatever you want, and yet you still connect to the network just like any other device that you typically vet, that are typically you know owned by the company and with the company software on there. So if Rim can show up with an actual solution where they can say to a big company like, hey, it's cool, you can have your Android. It's the RIM Android where we've locked it down and you can do your group policies and push your things to your employees and make sure the remote wipe and all that other fun stuff. They could really nail this, and I hope that they do. Do you think Jack Hittery wants to be CEO of RIM? He should. Why not? I mean, he's, he's qualified. Co-founder of Dice. He, he sounds, he he's sounds led like companies he's, before. He, I don't know if anybody wants that job. Yeah, well, I, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's like we said that about Yahoo, though. Well, How do you feel about Canada, Jack? <laughs> Love Canada. Socialized medicine, I'm there.
Uh, so we have we have a music segment today. Yeah, it's it's uh, rap little... music Friday. That's right. Uh, happy rap music Friday, everyone. Uh, there's a couple couple, couple different stories that just coincidentally happen to have come out around the same time. The first one is is a is a bit of a free speech uh, uh, discussion. The story is is that there's a fan that was at an MC Chris show in Philadelphia a few nights ago. Um, MC Chris had an opening act. I don't know, it doesn't even matter who the opening act was. This fan didn't like the opening act, and instead of heckling this person on stage or, you know, storming out, whatever, ended up tweeting, Dear nerd rapper opening for Power Glove MC Chris, you're not good enough to pander to me. Better luck next time. That was pretty much it. The fan, as as is the story at least that he told on Reddit, says... He kind of goes out to get a drink in the lobby. All of a sudden, people going crazy back in uh, it, on the stage. He started looking around, and all of a sudden, MC Chris is talking about his Twitter handle, saying, "Who is this? Who are you? Where are you?" Mike Taylor. I, yeah, I'm calling you out. So the guy raises his hand in the crowd and basically gets kicked out. MC Chris says, "Security is going to take you out. That's what you get for talking bleep on Twitter." So idea, I guess the, the story is somebody's searching for keywords, sees this tweet, doesn't like it, kicks the guy out. Well, of course, Reddit, as, as Reddit tends to do, the story goes viral. Uh, MC Chris ended up apologizing to this particular fan on Twitter. That tweet has since been deleted, but then he did uh, post a much sort of more broad video to YouTube explaining, I lost my cool. That was an issue that was my problem. I probably ruined this guy's night. That wasn't cool either. It, it was pretty much just a mistake, and I take responsibility for it. I, I, I would be I, uh, cheering for MC Chris if the guy had tweeted something really awful or been a super troll. Mm -hmm. But all he said was, "I don't really like. I don't this really like your band. act. Better luck next time." You know, it's kind of yeah. kind of snarky, maybe at worst, but it wasn't that. Well, bad. maybe MC Chris had a bad day. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, how many trolling comments did he possibly see? And then this is the one, one that guy. just pushed him over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is this is just the transference of energy, though. Is like this guy does a bad or what he perceives as a bad show, and then he feels like he needs to get that out of his system, so he tweets it as so many people do, and he just like throws that out into the ether so that he doesn't have to like have that inside. And then you know, MC Chris picks it up because it dilutes through all of his Twitter followers, and uh, and then you know that energy then just transfers back to him like. Booting him out the door. I'm just kind of impressed that anybody is following all of these tweets that were probably going out in real time at this concert and still was a performing for the masses. The second half of Rap Music Friday, this is a very bizarre story, uh, was written up on BuzzFeed about a man named David Johnson who emails uh, rapper Jay-Z uh, many, many times. Um, in fact, around 262 emails since March of 2010. So super fan, writes him about all sorts of stuff. Why is this interesting? Because the man David Johnson claims Jay-Z is reading all these emails and I have proof because I'm using a tool called Read Notify. This is, it's almost like kind of an old school marketing tool where you embed a small invisible image in the message that you send out, and when that message is opened by the person on the other side, that image loads, read notify, has the information um, that's been sent back to its servers. So you get information on what time the email was opened, how long the email was opened, a rough location of where the email was opened from. And he says, listen, Jay-Z was supposed to be, you know, he was scheduled to, to be at a show in New Zealand. Email was opened in New Zealand. Same thing happened uh, near a place that he was vacationing in France. And I know this because, I don't know, I read the gossip rags type of a thing. So there's too much of a coincidence for him not to be reading this email. BuzzFeed, who wrote up the story, <laughs> and the author of the story was like, it's official, this is the weirdest thing I've ever written about, contacted Jay-Z's team, and, and, and the author says, they really didn't deny that Jay-Z was reading these emails. They just don't really want to talk about it. Yeah, I wouldn't I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to talk about it either. Well, but because yeah, you're even if the even if let's say that Jay Z was reading this man's emails. And we don't know the extent of everything that was written, but some experts that I've written, they he doesn't sound like a crazy person, just somebody that really wishes that they could have a two way conversation. Right. He's but opening you, but the you emails. Doesn't mean he's reading them. And it doesn't mean it's him. Yeah, that's right. He's Could got be an handlers, assistant. right? Yep. He's probably very rarely traveling alone. There might be somebody who's often in the same place that he is for vacations or 
A lot of times Maybe assistants the is will, a good will time. open email uh, for busy people and, and point out the ones that are important for them. Sure. That happens here, mm -hmm. actually. I think, yeah. He claims, though, again, because of this tool, some emails are open several times. So it's not just a matter of blah, 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 crazy person. Okay, no. That's because, like, blah, two blah, different blah. assistants check the inbox. <laughs> I don't know. I, well, maybe it, Jay-Z's reading really these. weird. I mean, maybe, I mean, again, he's, he's touring. He's got to be sitting around. He's not driving, right? He's obviously in the back. He's, we're looking around like, oh, this guy's pretty, this guy always writes interesting stuff. Maybe this is what he just does in his spare time. I mean, you have a lot of time when you're, I guess, super rich and been, you know, moved around by by other drivers. So why not read this guy's email? I'm, I'm wondering I've read what some of this. Looks nuts. they're using because what, what client is actually like loading an image by default? You know? Oh, people do that all the time. Really? The web interfaces mm -hmm. and, and, and well, on... Well, Gmail shows up the thing and like... And on iPhones oh, and stuff like that. Really? Yeah, yeah, That's for sure. That's just whack. He should, he should embed like a... Uh, one pixel by one pixel iframe with a vulnerable PDF. I think that's what he's doing. Well, except for the... Vul but one, I think that's what this is, is a one yeah. by one pixel exactly I yeah. iframe. Is. Yeah. Because otherwise he wouldn't be able to tell all this stuff. Really crazy fans? Take it the next step. You know? Turn off thing. cookies, Jay-Z. <laughs> Turn off your images. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the randomizer. Randomizer. Maybe even weirder. Uh, Microsoft is embarrassed because kernel hacker Paolo Bonzini posted a message about a string in on the Linux kernel mailing list uh, that Microsoft has been using to allow programs to run a virtual version of Linux. Oh, you're talking about that one that's uh, the decimal equivalent of 117-1070-181. Man, that one gets that me every makes time. You, it makes you laugh, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, because uh, the 177 part... Yeah, if you don't know what that means, it's a hexadecimal string that's OXB16B00B5. Now, if that doesn't make you laugh... Uh, Get out your graphing calculator. <laughs> you write, write it out or look at it. It spells boobs, B00B5 at the end. And that got everybody all crazy. On, oh, Microsoft did this on purpose, which... Apparently, the string was used many times. Well, you can't blame us. I mean, we're all under 13, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it would be different if everyone was adults Yeah, here. eternally 13 on the internet. I mean, <laughs> on the true. other side, everybody's been 13. So we can all appreciate B16, <laughs> B005B, or the other one, which has been in the kernel for even longer, the uh, the 0B00B135. That one's boobies. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft issued a statement. We thank the community for reporting this issue and apologize for the offensive string. So offensive. It's not even that offensive, but I'm sure it's one of those things where it's like the guy who did it was like, no one's ever going to notice this. And <laughs> oops, people yeah, notice. How many times do you, you think this hex boobs. string shows up legitimately by accident? Are we going to start combing through source code now and be like, anytime we see, you know, the, you know, I mean, whatever. Yeah. And, and it, may have a productive outcome because it has started a serious conversation amongst people on these these threads about uh, sexism amongst programmers and the perception of women in programming and, mm -hmm. and, and fairness. Uh, you, you may or may not agree that this particular hexadecimal string is, is that bad, but it, it gets people talking about the issue, which is good. Hmm. Okay. No? Yeah, I, I feel you. I'm just thinking about, like, every time I had a, like, when I was working on web pages... And I had to make sure that something worked on IE6 or IE5. I would comment out a bunch of swear words because it would drive me crazy to make things work. So I'm like, if you're reading this and you're reading the source code of this, this means uh, the actual page source. You should know that I worked the 20 hours on this and like, I'm just ranted right well, in the page because I'm like, if you're working for long hours trying to get something to work, you just start amusing yourself at some point. And mm -hmm. this this guy I think was doing that, but the serious discussion should be should be had. Let's move on to the calendar. Do -do -do. Ding -a -ding. The Sony NSZGS7, which is the Whoa, best what does that name spell? ever. Boobs. No, it doesn't spell boobs. I wish it did, though. <laughs> uh, but it will yeah. be out in the U.S. for $199, $199, not $1.99. Sunday, the 22nd, future of Google TV. Anybody? Yeah, at least Anybody? this one doesn't have a yeah, Dorito sure. for a chip. Okay. The Google Science Fair Finalist Awards event is Monday, the 23rd. Congratulations in advance to whoever they are. The import ban on Motorola's Android products takes effect Wednesday, uh, July 25th. And finally, got um, good Motorola news. Motorola thinks they have a workaround, by the way, in case you're worried. But Well, of course. Yeah. yeah. We'll appeal instead of we'll roll over and die. Good news for Android fans. HTC noted earlier this morning that the One X, the One XL, and the One S handsets will absolutely 100% definitely for sure get Jelly Bean OS. Awesome. When? Yeah, when? HTC doesn't know that part. Oh. 
So probably sometime after the next version's announced at Google I.O. next year. It's kind of how these things work. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I don't know, probably. It was just a tiny little dig. Yeah, so whenever... Doing a new iPhone show. What are you Kinder offering? eggs. When Kinder eggs come out, right? Kinder eggs. Do you think that's what... Yeah. No, no, I thought it's it was a key, lime. It's key lime pie. I know. I wish I, I wanted it to be Kinder egg. eggs. Let's check what's incoming. Incoming message. We got a voicemail about charging for FaceTime. What do you got to say for yourself, Jonathan? Hey, TNT crew. This is Jonathan from Fresno. Uh, I had a follow-up question regarding uh, AT&T beginning to charge minutes for FaceTime usage. Um, something that I didn't hear talked about yet was what about iPads? Uh, I have a third-generation iPad on Verizon, and I actually don't have an iPhone, but I was really looking forward to using my iPad for FaceTime over LTE. But I don't pay for any minutes for my iPad. So how are they going to work that out? And how crazy is it going to look if you can use FaceTime for free on your iPad, but it's going to cost you minutes on your iPhone? Anyway, thanks. Love the show. Well, it's Verizon, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess the same issue would work if, it, if you had an AT&T Yeah, iPad. because iOS 6 is bringing FaceTime over cellular. So that would be true of every iPad because it's on Verizon and, and AT&T. So uh, the current plans are just flat data charges. So it'd be strange if there was this little plus charge, I guess, on each one. Because AT&T, obviously. AT&T will do it. I yeah, have no doubt absolutely. that they will say, okay, you get a flat charge for data on your iPad unless you're using FaceTime, in which case you have to add the FaceTime plan. That sounds awful. Then it's you a just phone company we're talking about here, so don't you know discount them. Don't, don't put it past them. They will do it. Anytime that they can charge differently for different data, I mean, it's all packets at the end of the day. Why don't we just charge per packet? I want to hear from that like heavy, heavy FaceTime user who's like, you know, a little bit of an extra monthly charge for the amount of FaceTime I'm doing is worth it to me. Haven't heard that from anybody yet. Nope. I don't think anyone uses FaceTime enough. But if you do, let us know. Yeah. You think this could be a deterrent that would actually like really hinder FaceTime adoption? I do. And maybe yeah. a boon to like Google Plus Hangouts and stuff. I think people will just keep using it on Wi-Fi, and they'll be like, oh, it's broken on data because I get a little <laughs> pop-up thing. I didn't take time to read it. TLDR <laughs> is not using it. Yep. Could it become a slippery slope that leads to any video over IP uh, falling into the same kind of category? No, no. no? We, we've gone the opposite way. Remember, Skype used to not work over data, and now oh, that's it does. True. Yeah, so I, I, I think the pressure that's is so, against this. It's so weird that they just single this one out. Next email, well, First email, really. Dan, the web monkey from Oz, writes, I was actually watching episode 545 while working on a 57-page Word doc that included almost 70 tracked changes that I then had to insert into an HTML doc. I, for one, can't wait for this, as instead of having to work for an hour straight because if I close the doc, then I'll have to start again, can't actually close it, come back to it later. He's, of course, talking about how nice it would be to have synced documents, so mm -hmm. if you're... 37 pages into a 57-page Word doc, then you open it up somewhere else and you're right in that place. He says, as an Apple fan that not only uses Windows on my work PC because I have to, I will generally complain less about having to use my work computer with this feature, at least until Mac Office 2014 does the same. Cool. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be uh, pretty handy for a lot of people to sort of whisper sync for Microsoft Word. Um, I just love the implication that it's like, you know, telling Microsoft where you are in all of your documents. That's going to be a fun thing to sniff. Sorry. That's my perspective. <laughs> all right. That's it for this episode of Tech News Today. Thanks, everybody, uh, for watching. Thanks for submitting stories. Thanks for listening. Technewstoday.reddit.com is our subreddit where you can go and let us know what stories you'd like us to mention, talk about on the show each day, whether you submit the stories as links or you just vote on the stuff that's been submitted. It all helps us figure out what to talk about each and every day. Also, don't forget, if you liked something that happened on the show, it doesn't have to be funny. It could be funny or just a really insightful thing or clever. Uh, anything you liked on the show, send it to TNT at twit.tv. Let us know when it happened, what it was. Put the subject line best of, and we'll save those moments, and we're compiling them together for an end-of-year best of show. That's TNT at twit.tv, subject line best of. Darren, always great to have you, man. Good to good to see you today. What's, uh, what's going on with the Hack 5 show? You know, have you ever uh, wondered where Wi-Fi was created. Turns out it was Norway, 1991, as a cash register system. You're going to learn all that about right? the ins and outs hmm. of Wi-Fi and how it's evolved and how it works. Uh, go on over to hka the number five dot org. Get learned up. That's right. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I got a huge workshop. 
All right, that's it for Tech News Today. You can find us on the web, twit.tv slash TNT. You can email us. Our email address is tnt at twit.tv. And you can give us a call. Leave us a voicemail like Jonathan did today. 260-TNT-SHOW is the phone number. Of course, you can attach an MP3 to an email as well. Uh, that works too. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll be back Monday with Will Harris as our guest. See you then.